this week we have the uh, unique and wonderful opportunity to sit down with uh, somebody very near and dear to me, my, my grandfather, also affectionately known as B-Paw to me, uh, <laughs> Al Richardson, a professional artist, and uh, um, he has been painting cars for a while. Um, a year or two. A year or two, yeah. Yeah, plus. <laughs> Longer than I've been around. Yes. Uh, and uh, so we're going to sit down and, and just uh, discuss cars, discuss uh, the art world a little bit, and um, and kind of dig into uh, some of your history a little bit. So okay. how did you get started in the painting, and in particular in the, the scene painting with uh, cars and things like that? Well, I was always interested in cars, and my dad was a mechanic, had a garage in his backyard, and... Uh, I grew up underneath them too, and uh, I always had an interest in it. And then when I uh, got older, and I realized I was able to paint and draw and create things, and yeah. so naturally I drew cars and airplanes and big boys, toys, motorcycles, stuff oh, like yeah. that. You know, in high school and all. And uh, in high school, we we went to drag races a lot and built some cars and. That was back when drag racing was just getting started good. So yeah. anyway, I uh, I naturally started, when I started painting, I putting them in my scenes then. And with the old stores and grocery stores and stations and stuff back in the 50s. And actually, a lot of the old stores back in the 20s and 30s that I used is in my scenes. But uh, I always had an affection for the old cars and uh, the 50s models and uh 30s, 40s, and 50s, and so I, I just naturally, I guess, adapted them to my scenes. When I saw an old station or store or something, I'd put a, put an old car in front of it and uh, draw it. And it, just, I just loved the lines of the old Model A's. It, they're kind of square, yeah. And compared to days, they're 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 nothing streamlined about them, but they, they were, uh, they were unique to me anyway. I enjoyed the, the oh yeah looks of them, yeah. That's cool. I, I I've been around it my whole life, of course, spending summers up here and uh, and watching you paint in the evenings and mm -hmm. um, and you even encouraged us, uh, the grandkids, as we were running around to to pick up a paintbrush. And um, there's a few of us that were a little better at it than others. I'll say yeah, that. <laughs> yeah, one of, one of y'all went on and got your art degree. And, yeah, yeah, and so. But the rest of you, uh, they always tried it, and they did something for me, you know. That they, oh, yeah. They'd do a, a car or something. And I had uh, I do pen and ink drawings of cars and stuff, and I'd just print them off black and white, and and then the grandkids could color them up uh, whatever they wanted to, you know. So Yeah, yeah. It was always, always fun, and I'm sure there's still some floating around here. <laughs> yes. Uh, hidden away in different places. Uh, oh, yeah. I got them filed away probably somewhere. So. Yeah. One of the uh, cool projects that uh, I actually have on the wall in my house, um, and you've done this for all the kids and grandkids, is uh, paint them a scene uh, when they get married as the mm -hmm. wedding gift. And I've got one of those um, on the wall in, in our kitchen, in our living room. Um, excuse me, in in our dining room. we got it yeah. hung up there. And yeah. uh, it's got a Volkswagen in it and uh, just a, a beautiful uh, West Texas kind of a, a feel to it. Uh, love that, love that painting. And we've got several others, uh, around the house too. Um, yeah, I tried to adapt it to your interest. I mean, you, you were way into Volkswagens all your life. Oh, yeah. And so, <laughs> and so I had to do your Volkswagen scene. That's and it. So, yeah. Yeah. I love it. I love it for sure. So, um, step into, um, the, the car realm a little bit. Do you have any notable vehicles from your growing up or from, from your history that uh would would be interesting i know one in particular spent some time here uh the the f100 i, I remember riding in, around in it a little bit yeah it's an f1 f1 excuse me it, yeah it was wait it was a 1950 forward pickup so yeah it was it was my uncle's and he gave it to me several years before the time y'all were up here and so the only thing i did to it, it had the old six-cylinder engine in it which is kind of rare for the pickups, most of them were V8s yeah. at that point, but flathead V8s. But this was a flathead six, and it uh, uh, we'd put a 12 volt uh, 
system on it so okay you, it was easier to crank and run oh and yeah so it, it was good and yeah we went to the creek a lot with it and hauled gravel and rocks and everything else and it back up to the house and stuff so yeah yeah it was fun yeah and the old pickup it, my uncle had hand painted it with with green paint <laughs> terrible stuff <laughs> terrible he was peeling off it was house paint wasn't it? it ended up being no he actually got the, the it was automotive paint it was actually supposed to be the color of the, and it was the color of the original pickup. okay okay but uh he just took a brush and painted it. <laughs> <laughs> the pickup the pickup had owned i i i I've known the pickup since the 50, when 1950, when it was brand new, because my neighbor had crossed the street had uh, had bought it, and he uh, would go around the neighborhood peddling produce and stuff. And so, okay, uh, it was a big deal when he got that 50, 1950 pickup. Man, it, it, all the neighbors went over. Cause that's back when something new was very rare. Yeah, because we were very poor and people just didn't have new things, and. Uh, so it was it was a, quite an occasion. Anyway, he had it for several years, and then my uncle, and then he gave it to me. So very cool. Uh, and I passed it on to one of my sons. So yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's actually hanging out in East Texas at the moment. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's down in East Texas. It may be a rat rod type of thing. Time he gets through with it, I don't know. So yeah, I, I hear uh, an S10 chassis is in the mix at this yeah, point. So yeah, yeah, it's going to lose some of its originality, but but the body's going to stay the same. So. Yeah, awesome. Awesome. That should yeah. be a fun one to. It'll be fun to have that one back on the road and, and running again too. Uh, yeah, yeah. But I, I tell you, the the ones that I really missed was my '57 Chevy convertible. Oh. And, and my '50 Mercury. Oh. <laughs> two oh. Door, two door sedan. Oh man, I just I uh, I just I you know for years after I I had to get rid of them or or sold them or. I had dreams about finding them things. <laughs> <laughs> I actually did, man. I was, I mean, I really did. And But it was a bronze uh, Sierra Gold uh, Chevy, and I had it lowered and stuff. And, it, you know, it was, just, it was my baby. Yeah. You know, and really loved it. I looked at, uh, at I go to a lot of show, art shows and at, uh, cars, at car shows. I combine them. Yeah. And... Uh, went to the nationals one time in louisville and uh, uh they had they had one in there as a turquoise color 57 chevy re redone re you know it was all fixed up all dressed up it was it was like an original all brand brand new but they wanted eighty thousand dollars and that oh, was that my was goodness that was 20 years ago so <laughs> oh my goodness i couldn't swing that but boy that was that was my dream but I've kind of <clears throat> gotten over it, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> That's just the thing you have to remember. But I remember uh, just driving along with that convertible. It's neat. The only bad thing is you didn't you didn't keep the top down in the summertime and let it sit out in the sun, then go out there and get in it. Oh, and go I bet. Oh, you just burn you up. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't sit in the seat. You know? <laughs> but oh, yeah, man. I enjoyed that and the Merc. I was I put it. Uh, I started putting a, an old engine into it. But uh, never did make it all the way. Had to sell it. But uh, yeah. had French headlights. And yeah, it was just a classic old 50 Merc, you know. And, that's cool. But that's two I wish I'd, uh, I had back for yeah. sure. Oh, definitely. Definitely. I had an, I had an old 46 Chevy carry all that my dad ha had. <coughs> and uh, it was kind of a neat truck, too. But uh, it's six, a little six cylinder. It wasn't fast or anything. But yeah. it, it did all right. So. Very cool. And you've got um, kind of a unique truck at the moment, uh, one that isn't usually decked out the way that yours is. Uh, the uh, And you'll have to remind me on the year of it. 97. 97 uh, Dodge, half-ton truck, four-wheel drive, mm -hmm. uh, single cab, long bed. Yeah. And uh, and it's it's a beautiful, well, I think it's a beautiful brown color. I love the color of that truck. And mm -hmm. it's got the camper shell on the back of it. It's spectacular uh half ton truck for the era especially and it's got the 318 in it correct yeah yeah and so yes, it's, a little... it's uh that's a I, I like that truck a lot yeah i do too i hadn't had it too long but it, it's been well taken care of and uh it didn't have that many miles on it so i was fortunate to get it but yeah it's it's, it's a neat little truck to drive so very I, cool I, I really enjoy it too very cool 
I never did. I, as a note, a, a little history. I've never uh, finished a street ride. I've started several. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I started several. Me and my buddy back in high school, we we had them, and uh, he fact actually got his running a little thirty four Ford, and uh, going. But I had I had Model A's. I was working on sedans. I always liked the Model A sedans. I had a thirty model, <clears throat> and I was gonna redo it but i never did get that far along with it so yeah you know you kind of get married and you kind of get <laughs> obligations and you kind of get uh, uh where you can't uh, oh do yeah it. and especially on just a little of salary you know oh yeah wasn't i was do i was working for texaco as a draftsman but uh that didn't pay that much back then is is adequate for making a living but that's about it so <laughs> <laughs> yeah so at what point did you make the transition then from, from Texaco, kind of the day job, into full-time artwork and, and traveling around to car shows and things like that? We was uh, living in Houston. Well, I lived in Bel Air, which is a little town in Houston, and uh, I was working for Texaco. And uh, I'd been painting part-time just on my own, just piddling for years. But uh, I, uh, one of the co-workers I worked with was an art uh, Art, uh, she was a professional artist too. She was great, and and she had gone to universities in Chicago and stuff, and gotten her degree. And so she, she kind of took me under her wing and showed me some things and taught me some things. She could see I had a, a natural ability. Yeah. To do it, and so, uh, she got me interested, and then uh, I started doing it. And for a few years, it's a few years before I uh, decided to kind of leave Texaco but I'd started doing art shows and uh and getting out with my work and making making a little money but actually not selling much but I thought I was anyway so <laughs> <laughs> anyway that encourages you when you can sell your work and oh and, yeah and people show an interest in it you can uh uh have the inward drive to keep going you know and yeah and have a have a goal maybe of, of being uh out on your own so that's what I did, I, and finally got to a point to where we opened a gallery in Bel Air. Uh, my wife Joanne, she uh, worked in it, and some of the kids did, and uh, we had that for a while. And uh, one Christmas, right before Christmas, she called me at work. I was at, still at Texaco, and she called me and said, uh, "I just can't handle all this. We got too much work to do." And, and all. <laughs> I said, "Okay, that's it." So I wrote my resignation out and left. Then. The job, particular job I had at that time, you had to leave. You couldn't. It was a security type thing. Gotcha. You, you couldn't stay around for a couple yeah, of weeks. Yeah. You know. So anyway, I left, and uh, from that point on, I did art shows, and we had the gallery for several years, art gallery and frame shop. And I went to <clears throat> a lot of art shows, but I, then I would do uh, car shows too. Yeah. Because a lot of times they have art booths and or vendors at car shows. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'd show my work and uh, do that. And so that was how I kind of got into that and uh, kept doing it and got into trucks too. I did 18 wheelers and that sort of stuff. I went to Dallas Truck Show many times, the GATS, Great American Trucking Show in Dallas, I guess, and showed my work. And so it was, uh, that's kind of how I got into all that. So. Yeah. Yeah. And have been doing it since. So yeah, yeah. You, you mentioned before we uh, started recording, you're not doing much on the commission side anymore, no. but you're still painting and still, still putting some still, things out there. Still doing a few things. Uh, probably not as much car, or automobile stuff, car stuff, and trucks as I used to, but uh, uh, I live in Arkansas now, and it's beautiful scenery, and so I've oh, yeah. gotten doing landscapes now. So Yeah. Well, and your, your passion from the artwork has bled over into your passion and your ministry in Honduras and what you love to do there as uh, the mission work and things that you do there. Right, yeah. We've gone to to Honduras for 10 years now, I think. Uh, each year we go with a group of uh, medical, dental uh, people that uh, take care of some of the needs of the people down there. And, uh, yeah, I've, I've done... Uh, what I went as is a MacGyver. I was just supposed to do everything to fi keep everybody going, <laughs> fix <clears throat> fix all the broken uh, uh, stethoscopes and all that kind of stuff. And uh, while I was down there, <clears throat> it's a beautiful country. We only stayed uh, sometimes just a week, uh, but uh, it's rough, rugged 
country uh, still still not uh, like our plate and like our country and developed <clears throat> and uh, a lot of mountains and beautiful scenes and yeah. stuff and so I've, I've done paintings a lot of paintings of that down there and uh, just still love it and then the last couple of years that I was there I stayed for uh, about a month <coughs> each time and uh, painted some murals on uh, I made a, a mural on uh, the compound the mission compound wall awesome so yeah, that was that was interesting. I didn't. I put a truck. Well, I put a bus in it. Yeah, I put yeah. A bus and a, and a, they have little pickups, little Toyota pickups, and I put that in too because we go out to the uh, mountains, the remote villages, and and take our uh, supplies and give to the people and give medical attention to the people and the ministry too. Of, yeah, uh, of the Bible. That's we, that that's a that's a heartfelt mission. And it's, it's, oh yeah, it's a, it's a. It's so rewarding because uh, when we first went, we we didn't know what to expect, but uh, we saw that what the poverty was there. And uh, when we came back here, and we opened our door to the house and saw how much we have. As a as a you know, you flip a switch and the light comes on. They don't even have a switch. They yeah. don't even have a light. Wow. You know, so it's very humbling. And you think you go down there to. Uh, to minister to them and to uh, give them attention and, and uplift them, but you're really the one that gets uplifted. That's yeah, <laughs> definitely. Well, we, I, I want to I want to make sure that I've got those photos from you of that mural in Honduras. And if it's all right with you, I'm going to take some stills here in the studio where we're hanging out today sure. uh, of some of the artwork around. We'll make sure we got that up uh, when we when we go live with this episode. Okay. Um, if you want to find B Paw Al Richardson, uh, he does have a Facebook page. He's got a few of his artwork on there. Uh, again, not doing much on commission anymore, but if there's some artwork and things that you're interested in, I'm sure he'd be uh, be willing to turn loose of it uh, for a price. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we can talk. We can talk. Thank you very much for being on and uh, sitting right. down with me for a little bit. And thanks for opening up your studio too for us to no to be problem. able to do this with. No problem. Glad to. All right. Thanks.